Hey guys, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Before anybody asks, I'm wearing sunglasses because I'm fighting. I woke up with a bad migraine and I'm fighting it and taking a bunch of stuff. Um, it co it's, it's due to a TBI, a traumatic brain injury I got while I was at Fort Drum. And every so often I get a real, real bad one. Um, used to be I had them two or three times a week, but back when I first started going to this church I'm going to that had hands on me and the Lord narrowed it down but he, I get them every now and then because it keeps me in check and it keeps me humble and I'm not going to let it hold me back from putting out a video because I have become very dedicated to this uh, and I'm very thankful that he's given me this ministry uh, this was something I always thought that I would end up doing back in the beginning 20 years ago when I first walked with him, a lot of people pushed me to do it. I let the world get in the way, got involved in other things, backslid. You, in other videos, I've told you some of the story. But uh, now he's woken me up and given me this ministry. And it's awesome because in weakness, God's strength is made evident. And with all the health issues I deal with, and right now I have this killer migraine. Um, it's so bad that I'm light sensitive, I'm sound sensitive, I've taken a Maxalt, some of you know what that is if you don't deal with migraines, I've taken two Excedrin Extra Strength, and I, uh, and you can, you can get mad all you want, you can say whatever you want, but surprisingly enough, the only painkiller that truly works for me is alcohol, so while I've conquered my alcoholism and my reliance on alcohol, I have a little bit every now and then to help with the pain because I'm also dealing with a bunch of physical pain right now. Um, so it's okay before anybody says anything. It's okay to have a drink. It's okay to have a couple of drinks. Getting drunk is the sin. Drinking is not the sin. Jesus drank wine. So go look in the scriptures and prove that to yourself. But today there's two points of importance that I want to cover, and um, I'm going to read some scripture first. Go over that at the end of the video. I'm going to give you guys something about a video upcoming I'm still gonna do the video on the two witnesses uh, things have, have been hectic I haven't been able to get back to my studies on that but there's another one coming up um, and we'll get into it at the end of the video uh, there's some details I need to share with you guys but it's a video I'm gonna give you guys is gonna give you a, a bunch of information that's gonna help you so I'm in Matthew 10 and um, it's uh, titled the Twelve Apostles. Excuse me. <sighs> and um, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna read the very beginning. I'm gonna skip down to verse five. In the beginning, it just it, it names the apostles. Talks about what Jesus gave them the power to uh, uh, cast out spirits and that. But Matthew 10 verse five. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, "Do not go into the way of the Gentiles." And do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now this is the instance where Jesus was giving Israel their, giving them their Messiah. I'm here, I'm standing before you. Uh, he stood in the synagogue and he read the prophecy of Isaiah, uh, talking about him. And he said, verily I say unto you, this prophecy has been fulfilled. And they still didn't get it. And it's just amazing that the one that they were looking for came to them at the appointed time and they still didn't receive him. And God said they're a stiff-necked people, but I love them. So pray for Israel. Don't ever turn away from them. Don't ever deny them because they are still God's chosen people and they will continue to be God's chosen people. So, but, rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's trying to save them, trying to get them to ex accept him because that, that's what his task was. Now, after the fact, then he went to the Gentiles because they denied him and the Gentiles were willing and able to accept. All of us were willing and able to accept him. So he thought, okay, well, I'll build a nation up for them then. And, and we were chosen to make them jealous so they would accept him. Because, especially in the end, uh, they're going to know that Jesus loved us. Even though as much as they, the Christian Jews lo love us because they know who we are and they know who they are. And know who their, our Messiah is, but the Orthodox Jews have a problem with us. They know we're their greatest ally, but when you get deep down into their beliefs 
and their Noahide laws and everything, you find out that they really don't care for Christians that much. So let's go to verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All of us watchmen are, are, are preaching the same thing, telling you guys we've been chosen to do this job. I've told you in future or in past videos, uh, this was given to me. This I was it was impressed very strongly on my heart to do this. Uh, I have no choice in this matter. I have to give these scriptures out because when I don't, I, I suffer for it. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Now a lot of this as I'm going to read in here applies to us too, even though at this time he was telling them to go talk to the Jews. So, he gave us this gift with no, he gave us these gifts with, with, you know, no, no payment or anything was necessary. So he asked us to freely give this out. Now, before anybody says anything, because I already know it's coming. What about those people who put their PayPal information up or ask for donations or anything like that? Listen, the worker is worthy of his wage. A lot of these ministries require funds to keep them going. You know, Fortunately for me, my ministry doesn't require funding. So I am go non-profit, and I don't ask for any donations, and I neither want any donations. But there are other ministries who are much bigger than mine. Mine's a single-person ministry. That's one of the reasons why my handle on YouTube is Lone Crusader. I work by myself, yet I'm within a brotherhood and of the same spirit of, of all my other brethren and other watchmen out there. But I don't need funding. The Lord has blessed me through many trials has blessed me with a uh, retirement from the military so I don't have to deal with that but a lot of other ones do and it's good for you to support them because especially if they're preaching the truth if they're not preaching the truth then you need to use your own judgment on that but if they're preaching the truth by all means support them uh, I support several of them um, but it's important that you guys realize that these people that are doing this this is for salvation's sake. This isn't for them trying to make a bunch of money. Um, I see a lot of comments. People are talking about, well, well, if you're, you know, nonprofit preaching the word, Jesus preached it free. Why aren't you preaching it free? They have a ministry they have to support. So there's nothing wrong with giving them their money to help them preach the word. Follow your heart. The Lord will put it on your heart what you should do. Um, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts. Now this was for the apostles. Nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. So he's trying to teach them not to rely on the things of the world, but rely on him. Rely on the one who sent him. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out, or till you leave the city. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. The apostles had very unique abilities and unique powers and gifts given to them because they were specifically chosen for this task. This is another way, and I've done another video on about, about apostles and prophets. This is a, another way you can tell if you're actually dealing with an apostle, which there may be some that Jesus has chosen, but for all intents and purposes, there were 12 apostles, 13 if you count Judas, who, who deceived Jesus. Um, and that's it. There are no other apostles. However, I believe there can be plenty of prophets. I believe there are still prophets to this day. So th these are good indicators on how you can, he teaches you what to look for, how you can tell who you're dealing with. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. That's your testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now understand, Sodom and Gomorrah was completely destroyed. And they know where they're at now. They, they found the ash piles are still there. The buildings who were turned to ash are still there. And nothing, nothing, nothing grows within the confines of those cities. It's pretty actually astonishing to look at that the grass grows right up to the edge, nothing, nothing in between, no weeds, no nothing. And the purest brimstone found on the planet, purest sulfur, is there in those areas, nowhere else on the earth. What does that tell you? And God said he'll leave them there to this day. You would think the rain would wash away the ashes, but it hasn't. 
over the last couple thousand years hasn't washed it away at all. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my, my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. Some of us could end up in these situations, and if that's the case, don't sweat it. Jesus is going to take care of everything. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. This is where faith comes in. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Guys, this particular scripture right here is speaking to all of you. I see your comments. All of you who are dealing with problems with family and friends. Um, I have abandoned a bunch of my friends, well, almost all of my friendships, because people are so hard-hearted against Jesus Christ and against what I've tried to preach to them and share with them. It's okay. I don't have any hate against them. I just know that this is a fruitful pursuit to continue a friendship with them. They all know where I'm at. They know how to get a hold of me. So I've, I've shared what I could, and if they don't accept it, that's on them. So don't be, don't be upset if you're dealing with these things. These trials and tribulations are to teach you patience and temperance, but when they curse you for, the, for what you preach to them, that's a blessing to you. And when you get up and stand before Jesus, you're going to find that out, and you're going to see just how much of your endurance shines a light upon you and what you've done. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Don't commit suicide. This is going out to all y'all who are struggling to that level. And I know how you feel because I tried it twice when I was in the army. I was dying. And I tried to kill myself twice. And I failed both times because he intervened. In fact, one time I was actually praying to him, asking him to stop me. Because I had no reason to stop. And he stopped me. That's a story for another time. But I know how you feel. I, I've, I've actually gone and saved other people. I drove all the way to Kansas just to keep one of my army buddies from committing suicide. You're not alone in this. Your struggles are not unique. There are many of us who have the same struggles or have survived these same struggles. Endure. Sweat it out. Sometimes you just got to be quiet, put your head down, and let it happen. And when it's over, the, the, the clouds will disappear and the light will shine. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And that's the truth. You look back in history, they, they didn't make it through all of them. They were ran out of Israel in most cases. Um, but this, goes, this scripture here, this verse goes back to... Um, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own city. So what he's saying is, is that you can go out to places where they don't know you and preach, and they'll flock to you, and they'll listen, and they'll accept you. In your own city, people who know who you are, won't do it. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Saying that if they go after your, your master or your teacher, they're going to go after you too. Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. A lot of people think that they are doing things in secret that God and Jesus aren't going to know about. Wrong everything is recorded and on that day everything will be made known in front of everyone can you stand before Jesus and in confidence or are you going to be ashamed when you stand before him that's one of the one of the reasons why I preach repentance if you're a Christian and you're still going through sins talk to Jesus Christ unload that burden off you he is faithful to forgive you he will forgive you he doesn't want you to perish so humble yourself. 
I, I tell you several times I've been next to my bed between the bed and the wall naked literally naked on the floor begging him to give me strength to conquer these sins I'm not sinless none of us are but what that shows him it shows him you want to be like him you're you have the desire to try because like I said in those videos you can make him mad you can make God mad you can you can make him mad at you there you're not condemned to death and hell but you can suffer some punishments if you're not if you're walking incorrectly but yet you still have faith in him whatever I tell you in the dark speak in the light and what you hear in the ear preach on the housetops and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell that's God so who are you more scared of the, the guy who can run a knife across your throat or put you in a guillotine or the one who can do that to you or and cause that to happen to you and cast you into hell I'm more scared of God than anyone else are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will so that's talking about salvation not judging others not looking down on others to cause one to fall and, and one to stay up because you don't believe what one says and what another one says but the very hairs of your head are numbered that means they know everything about you do not fear therefore you are of one or you are of more value than any sparrows than many sparrows so if he takes care of the birds why would he not take care of us there's actually a parable about that in the new, in, further in the New Testament. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Preach the kingdom. Share the gospel with others. A lot of people I, I see don't believe that they need to do that. I'm saved. I'm good. I can sin. I can do whatever I want. I don't need to tell anybody nothing. I can keep it to myself. Guys, you, your faith has you saved. But if you do nothing with that faith, faith go to the parable of the three servants one given ten talents one given five talents one given one talent read that parable who came out on top and who came out on the bottom if you receive share it and give it out because the idea is you want to take what you're given and at least double it that's why I say in my prayers and I say in a lot of videos I hope these videos that I put up will cause one just one person to repent just one person to accept Jesus Christ and be saved just one if I can do that I've doubled what he's given me and that that's perfectly fine with me everything above that is a blessing but whoever denies me before men listen but whoever denies me before men him I will also deny before my father who is in heaven are you preaching the kingdom if people ask you you believe are you telling them no are you denying it are you turning away from him don't do it guys read the scriptures it tells you and and if you have talk to him talk to him tell him what's going on and how you feel he is faithful to forgive you do not think that I came to bring peace on earth I did not come to bring peace but a sword for I have come to set a man against his father a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be those of his own household I have experienced that he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Now what does that mean? I've seen a lot of people ask about that. Excuse me one second. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. So what is he talking about about the separation of families? In families you have, uh, like in my case, I'm one of I think only two that truly believe, three maybe, that truly believe in my family. There are many of them that claim it but don't really walk that path. Um, he's come to give the gospel and to give knowledge and understanding but it's to separate the good from the bad. It's to separate those who are walking with him from those that aren't. Now, if you turn away from Christ and go chase after these family members because you're desperate that they have to be 
you have to defend them, you have to protect them, you have to try to save them, there comes a point where you've got to say, okay, this is in God's hands and Jesus' hands. It's not mine anymore. I've done what I can. I've shared, I planted a seed. I've shared the word. And a lot of people have come down to this. I, I've done I've done it in my life and in my family. I've had to turn away from a bunch of them. But that's normal. That's going to happen. Because not everybody's going to accept it. Not everybody's going to believe the same way you do. And it's okay. He picks those out that are truly walking with him, that have faith in him, to deliver the gospel and deliver the word. And some of those he picks out don't follow it. They turn away from him. They deny him. So... The idea is you're going to take up your cross, which isn't literal. It's you taking on the burden of preaching the gospel because it, it comes on you pretty hard and go and follow after Jesus and walk that path. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to do it. Are you condemned because you don't? know? But in order to be Jesus' disciple, this is what you have to do. Uh, me and all the watchmen, all the watchmen are, are doing this. We're doing what he told us to do. We, he put it on our heart. We bore our cross and we're out there doing it. And we endure the hate because of it. But it's okay. That's a blessing. People hate us. That's a blessing. Especially if it's in Jesus' name. Or because of Jesus. But we've been given a task and we're going to follow that task. A lot of people out there have been called to be watchmen and have denied it. That's unfortunate. Um, Jesus counts that for you, know, for you or against you. So read the scriptures and and understand. This is part of the reason why I share scriptures was to help is to help people understand some of these things. And I, before you say it, I don't have all understanding. Uh, I just give what I'm given. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. So if you are going out there and you know what, I love Jesus Christ, but I like fishing. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get me a boat and I'm going to skip church on Sunday and I'm going to go, uh, or if you're a Seventh-day Adventist Saturday, I'm going to go fishing and uh, it's okay because he, it's our, he's forgiven me. He, he, he doesn't mind if I do these things. Well, true, he doesn't mind if you do those things and enjoy some of the things in life. The apostles did. But what's our primary concern in this short life? That's to preach the gospel. Not everybody's called to do that, but many of us are. And a lot of people turn away and they go and they spend money on all the new cars, go and get a boat, you know, and play toys and all that kind of stuff. And their focus is on things, not on the Lord. And he gives very clear instructions here. If you, that's what you want, then go get it. But that's going to be taken away from you in the end because you don't take that into the in a new, new kingdom. You don't take that stuff into heaven. That's all crap. It's all junk. But when you deny those things and chase after the Lord, and that's your focus, it, it looks more, way more favorably on you. Am I telling everybody that they need to go and they need to follow after the Lord? Nope. That's between you and Him, not between me, you, and Him. I'm just giving you the scriptures that are explaining everything to you. He who receives you, receives me. I want you to pay close attention to the next couple of passages because they're pretty telling. But He gives you the, the gives you what how you are to interpret it with this passage here. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So that's the first me is Jesus. And the second me is Jesus. But the him is God. So that's your template for the next couple of passages. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So that would be Isaiah being received in the name of God. So you'll receive the reward of what that prophet's going to get. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So that would be someone, I don't want to call myself righteous, but just for example's sake, someone who accepts me as somebody who's giving out the scripture and walking in the, in the Lord and coming in the name of the Lord, um, what is that? Baruch Hashem Adonai, or Baruch. I had to go. Uh, Baruch Hashem Adonai uh, El Eloheinu. Yeah, Baruch Hashem Adonai Eloheinu. Me, yeah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, 
So that can be you receive when you receive that man who does come in the name of the Lord and who preaches straight from the scriptures and gives you the truth of everything, you receive the righteous man that sent him, which is Jesus Christ. You receive the righteous man's reward. So you can see that he's talking about a stare-down effect. If you want to deny these people that are out here trying to preach the truth, okay, you go right ahead. You are free to choose that. But there's going to be recompense for that. You go and you accept that person and go, okay, what they're saying matches the scripture. I got it. And you bless that person and, and go after that person, follow and listen to what that person says and test what that person says. I'm not 100% correct. Test what I say against the scripture. That's why I give you the scriptures. But there's a reward for you because you've done that. Because that shows faith. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So, whoever gives one of these little ones, little ones can be someone young in Christ. Only a cup of cold water. Now, if you go to the parable where it talks about, in the Revelations, when he's referring to the churches, you are neither cold nor hot water, you are lukewarm water. And I will spew you out of my mouth. Well, cold water, that's a blessing. That's the cold water of life, the, the, from the wellspring of life, which comes from the throne of God, from, from Jesus Christ. In the name of a disciple, which could be anyone. Anyone who is following Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a, an, an apostle to be a disciple. You can be, a, I'm a disciple, because I'm doing what he told me to do and what he commanded me to do. I say to you, he shall by no means lose his, his reward. Guys, there's, this goes to works, and works cover the word works covers a lot of different things, a lot of different stuff that we do. A lot of it can be faith, a lot of it can be uh, works from the heart, and there's a reward for all that kind of stuff. And you guys don't realize that everything we do and say and think, everything we think we, is hidden, they know all of it, every bit of it. God is so far above and beyond anything we can understand. It is unbelievable. So you can't hide anything from him. You can't keep anything from him. So when you in your heart say, oh, this guy don't know what he's talking about. This lone crusader guy, he's, he's this and he's that. He doesn't understand the scriptures. And uh, even though I'm reading the scriptures and, and it matches what he said, he don't, he don't know what he's talking about. Well, I just read you the scripture that talks about that stuff. So go into Matthew 10. Read Matthew 10. See what you think. And I apologize because I'm having such a hard time with this. It's hard to concentrate, but I'm trying to give you guys what I'm being given. So that's the scriptures. It's very simple. Instead of trying to look for secret codes or look for secret passages or look for secret meanings or, or decide that everything is spiritual meaning, um, you know, you're denying the Word of God when you do that. Uh, there's a lot of people, and I think Tim Henderson and a few others have talked about uh, there's people who don't believe in the millennial kingdom. They believe in a spiritual millennial kingdom. Well, that's wrong because that's not what the Bible teaches. The scriptures, excuse me, the scriptures are very clear. It talks about a physical millennial kingdom. It gives the specific days of things that are going to happen from the seven-year tribulation and what happens 45 days after the end of the seven-year tribulation when people walk into the millennial kingdom. It's very literal. When you try to look for secret codes, Satan goes in there and he starts messing with you. I'm not denying that there's secret codes. Uh, I'm all for people doing that. But what happens is, is you start looking for things and you miss the mark sometimes and little tiny details that will tell you what these things are and you end up chasing after a false doctrine or you try to rewrite scripture. You cannot do that. He who adds or takes away from this, this sayings, you know, the plagues of this Bible will be added to him. So don't try to change what's being said. Read it for its face value. Then expound on that with translations and with numerology and things like that. But you got to remember where the core is. You got to remember what the the baseline is, and that's face value understanding of the scripture. It, it, I think it's great that, that people are able to go and do all these other things. I learned from them, but I can go and watch a lot of the stuff they put out and come back to the scriptures and go, that doesn't match it at all. Because God will not give you something. He's not the author of confusion. 
he will not give you something that doesn't parallel or jibe with his scripture that he's given. Because if he comes to you and he gives you a dream, I actually commented on somebody's comment about that, and gives you a dream, and that dream is totally different from what the scripture says. Well, this is a special word from God. Are you sure it's from God? Because he's not going to go and give one person a special word that doesn't match his scripture. And expect that to get out to everybody, to, to talk to everybody. It could be that was given just to you for your faith, or it could be that Satan is trying to trick you. So you have to examine everything you're given. Every dream, every vision, it has to be examined to see if it matches the Bible. This is our guidebook. Now, a lot of people I see go back, well, you can't believe this part because uh, Paul wasn't a real apostle or, or these scriptures were mistranslated. All this. If you deny one word in the Bible, you're denying the whole thing. You've got to decide, first and foremost, do I believe the word of God, which is what we've had for hundreds of years, thousands of years if you go back to the scrolls, or do I want to pick and choose what I want to believe is true? When you start picking and choosing, you start creating a false doctrine. And if you're teaching people that, that's going to be put back upon you when you stand before him. Don't think that you're above punishment just because you're a Christian. There's lots of other things that we don't understand that are going to happen when we get up there. So be careful. Study the scriptures. Be in prayer about it. And make sure you examine anything that you're given and see if it matches scripture. If it matches scripture, it's from God. If it doesn't, don't walk away from it. Until you can prove it legitimate, walk away from it. That's my best advice concerning the Bible. Just read it and bounce everything off of it. Because if you have no baseline to go by, well, how do you know anything that you're being taught is true? You have to have a baseline, and that's what the Bible is. Now, I shared that scripture with you. I hope it blesses somebody. I hope it spoke to somebody. Because I know how it speaks to me, and it can speak to somebody differently. My goal is to create faith. My goal is to create more understanding, share more of this understanding that I've been given. And my goal is to help those who are walking or having questions or stumbling or, or struggling to gain strength from this. And if anybody who isn't saved, go in the description. I want you guys to go down there. There's a, a very short, simple prayer. If you're having problems figuring out what you want to say, there's a short, simple prayer that will help you. But believe and repent, because that is what's going to get you into heaven. Is it believing what Jesus did, believing he walked this earth. They find proof every week that Jesus walked this earth. People can say he never existed. Well, they find his name everywhere over there now. They're, they're finding temples, synagogues, that have Jesus' name in tile work in there. I mean, deny it all you want to, but all you're doing is denying him. Now that I put that, oh, and make sure you go in the description and check the links I put in there because there's some links in there for other channels that teach Bible prophecy and share scripture and help with people's understandings. Uh, Amir Sarfati with Behold Israel, Jan Markell with Olive Tree Ministries, those are both Messianic Jews. Uh, Tim Henderson, he's basically he's a Messianic Jew because he's tracked his heritage back. Um, he get They get a lot of news reports on what's going on around the world. And I also put... Um, Barry Scarborough in there and I'm about to put I'm, I'm going to add in the next couple of videos uh, Jack Hibbs and Watchmen on the Wall 88 both are excellent guys to listen to um, and my goal is that, to lead you guys to channels who are preaching the truth so it will help you guys and help you understand um, but the next couple of videos you'll see those other links in there but go down there check the description I got my email address in there email me I'm happy to talk. I'm conversing with two people right now. Happy to talk with you guys. Happy to reason the scriptures out with you guys. Because if I'm wrong on something, I want somebody to let me know so we can go study it. And so I can correct myself if I'm putting out something wrong. I don't want to deny anybody. I don't want to mislead anybody. Now that I've gotten all that out, I'm going to do a video. And hopefully it will be the next couple of days. Um, and it's going to talk about Yellowstone and what's happening with Yellowstone. And not just Yellowstone, there are other uh, uh, volcanoes that are having problems around the earth. But for Americans, Yellowstone is our biggest threat right now. And there's some precautions because activity has skyrocketed in the last couple of weeks. And there are some precautions that you guys need to understand and take. If that decides to blow and we haven't been taken out of here yet, or even for people who are going to be stuck here uh, and left behind, or for any, just for general knowledge, 
there are some survival techniques that are going to help you guys. I've done some research on this. Um, I found this information, uh, and it's good information, and it's going to help you. A lot of people have this idea in their head when the ashes fall, and they can put a wet handkerchief over their mouth. That does not work. I'm going to show you guys what you need to go pick up. It's cheap and inexpensive. I like, I'm actually going to buy one so I can show it to you because I need to get a couple for the house just in case. Because you do not want to breathe not even any particles of this ash. Um, this stuff can travel a thousand miles away and you can inhale it. And what it happens is if you're close and you inhale a bunch of this ash, even though the eruption doesn't get you, it turns to concrete in your lungs. Um, one inch of ash on a roof after it gets wet, uh, it quadruples in weight and it'll crush a house. Um, but you breathe that stuff in, that's your death sentence. You're literally going to die within hours. Maybe you might make it overnight. But I'm going to show you guys what to do. I'm going to give you the information. This has all been researched and it's going to help you guys to cover the very basics. So if that thing decides to go, which it sure looks like it's about to, um, and you're not within the blast area, that you can have a better chance of sur survival afterwards because we don't know what the future holds we don't know if we're going to die tomorrow we don't know if we're going to make it out the front door door the next day we don't know if a meteor is going to fall in our house plane is going to crash in our yard anything can happen so i want to share with you guys what i've been given because the the sharing of knowledge and understanding is benefit to everyone so stay tuned for those videos stay tuned for the video about the two witnesses i'm going to try to give you guys everything about that to show you that from what I've read in the scriptures, the two witnesses are not two people. And this has been the common belief. The two witnesses are two groups of people. When you understand that, it makes the rapture make so much more sense. And it helps you understand a lot of the scriptures as it pertains to the two witnesses and the 144,000, the evangelizing around the world and everything. But I'll give you details in that video. It'll be dedicated just to that. I love you guys. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not at my best doing this video right now. But... The headache's starting to go away. Um, I'm going to spend the rest of the evening with my glasses on trying to stay in the dark so I don't, don't fight with it tomorrow because I'm going to help my pastor with some stuff at his house tomorrow. Seek out the true knowledge. If there's something you don't understand, ask somebody. Ask multiple people. Um, use the Google trick that I use where I go onto Google and I type in Bible verses about this and you're, you'll see bible tools bible study tools bible app.com and you can go in there and they show you all the scriptures that pertain to that subject you were talking about then take your bible open it up and go through and check and read each scripture in context i promise you because this has been given to me i promise you this will help your understanding of bible scripture because what it does by you doing that because a search for knowledge is a search for god by doing that, you open that door to understanding so much wider. And the blessings of God will come in to you. And if you guys have questions, email me. Email me, and I don't know everything about it, but we can, un we can study it together and research it together and see what kind of conclusion we come up with. And finally, to end the video, to all of you out there who claim Christianity, claim faith in Jesus Christ, but are showing hate and vitriol to your brethren that are in Christ that look at the scriptures or believe the scriptures differently than you. I'm not denying your faith. I never will deny your faith because I don't know your heart. Jesus does, however. And if you're doing this to your brethren when Jesus commanded us not to do that, doesn't that show you that you're fulfilling the Bible prophecies about the mockers and the scoffers? Now, uh, somebody I read a comment on talked about, well, you know, we just we just look at uh, Scripture differently and understand it differently, but you guys call us mockers and scoffers. It's not the fact that you see Scripture differently. It's the fact that you go out there and you start cussing and calling people names and telling them they're stupid, they don't know what they're talking about, and throwing all this hate out there to somebody who sees it differently than you instead of actually sitting down and let's have a discussion about this. That's not biblical. I've done videos on this. I've read scriptures pertaining to this. It's not biblical for you to be that way towards somebody else who believes in Jesus Christ. 
The idea is we all share what we know and what we've been given so we all get a greater, more rounded understanding of the scriptures. It's The idea is for us to be a blessing to each other. But if you're out there throwing names and all that kind of stuff, you are literally fulfilling Bible prophecies when in those days there will be mockers and scoffers saying, when is, where is the promise of his coming? You guys are fulfilling that. I implore you, I beg you in Jesus' name, read the Bible. If you don't understand it, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Lots of us don't understand it. Seek out those who do and then get into the scriptures. Don't just take what a man says for gospel. Don't take what I say for gospel. I give you the scriptures, read the scriptures. Look it up and see if you understand. I told you how I do the searches that show me all the scriptures pretending to that subject. Do that trick. I'm giving you what I've been given that helps me understand and this will also help you understand. Or it will help you see something that I didn't see and you can let me know about it and we can talk about it and we can get in there. Because I'll never tell somebody they're wrong unless whatever it is completely contradicts the Bible. Then that's wrong. But if you show me something and it's like, hmm, you know what, that may be right. I want to discuss it because I want to learn. I want to learn and I want to be better at understanding the Bible than what I am. All knowledge comes from Jesus Christ, but it's up to us and the brotherhood to share that between each other. So, I put in the description, share it with any and everyone. If you've got people that are struggling, by all means, share my videos with them. Hopefully it'll have, a, it'll have an effect on them. Hopefully it'll, this will inspire people to get into the Bible. Don't rely on what man teaches you. Get into that scripture and rely on what Jesus will show you. Because he's the one who's going to lead you to salvation, not to sin or not to temptation. And be in prayer, guys. Bless your brethren. Bless your Israel. Bless the government. We have a lot of people in the government that are fighting for us right now. And they are fighting a losing battle. But... That loss isn't going to be a loss of, uh, to a detriment. That loss is going to be a loss to salvation because they're doing the right thing. I love you guys immensely and fiercely. Stay tuned. Keep studying. Keep watching. Keep looking up. We are in a high watch time this weekend. So much stuff is happening around the world. we got a war about to kick off in the Golden Heights. People fighting like crazy. Russia's on the defensive. Trump signed the deal. For the uh, to, to, to get us prepared for EMP attacks. We know it, Russia has one. We know North Korea has one. We don't know who else is. There's been threats against us and the UK of an EMP attack. We know that they will it will take out our entire country. Maybe I need to do a video on Faraday cages. You know what? Do a Google search on Faraday cage. F-A-R-A-D-A-Y. Um... You can build a small scale ones to protect certain things. Um, and there's other ways on how you can ground your vehicles and stuff like that. A lot of people do it already. But there's lots of knowledge out there about how to protect against an EMP attack and how to, how to make your chances of surviving much better um, and, and being more comfortable much better. Do your research. Do your due diligence. Take the time to seek this stuff out because ultimately what you'll do is you'll find God in these things and be able to take that that you've been blessed with and share it with others. I'll see you guys in the clouds, or I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully in the clouds, but probably in the next video.